When I was a kid, I did a really geeky thing just because I could. I trained myself to count seconds precisely. And... <laughs> oh. What are you talking about, Neil? That's not geeky at all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my personal best, my personal best was I counted 89 seconds when 90 seconds had passed. And I used to do it with stopwatches. I, was, I almost got an applause for that thing. Mm -hmm. One other, um, and so, so Brian, I just try to match real time, yeah. but sh she's saying it's like the brain can be manipulated well, to think about. Is there a such thing as real time? I don't, I mean, like, I just think it's an illusion that we experience, but is there actual real well, time? Well, I, I, you know, from the standpoint of physics, there is a conception of time because that's what allows change to occur. So when people say, from a physics standpoint, that time is an illusion, I don't really know what they mean, but it is the case that our experience of time, which you say that you can manipulate, which is quite interesting. With magnets. Our, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, our experience of time does not give us insight into the way time actually works. Because once you learn that time for me is not the same as time for you, if we're in motion or if we're experiencing different gravitational fields, these are measurable differences between how your watch and my watch will tick off time based upon what we're doing and where we are. That's counterintuitive. We've never experienced that. It took a genius of Einstein to come along and reveal it. So I would say that our experience of time gives us a misrepresentation of how time actually behaves, but time is real. But for every one of us, we are prisoners of the present, eternally transitioning from our past to our future. What did he say? Hey. Oh. Jesus. Wow. Man. That's, <laughs> that's deep, man. Man, I, I wish just end the show right now, <laughs> man. Like, you said that, I was like, I guess we out of time. <laughs>